Well, general chemistry lecture one. Guys, in general chemistry lecture one, it is more on the principles, foundations, concepts, theories like that, and started first with the understanding or the better understanding of matter like that and then you need to have a future to understand properly which i will be doing that later okay but before that i need to activate my brain cells i need to drink hot coffee <laughs> okay so i will guys okay so i will see you guys on flow chart okay it's gonna be uh uh, matter okay matter is anything that occupies space and has mass okay like that anything I have to write this guys this is a very common definition even though elementary student knows this grade 6 or grade 5 students in the grade school level and then high school or so and then if you try to memorize this, it will retain to your brain cells and then you can easily accumulate this for how many years. You can still remember the basic definition. If you really understand, what you are memorizing. Okay. Anything that occupies space that has mass. Okay. Space that has mass. Okay. So basically guys, these are all about the phases of matter meaning solid, liquid, and gas. So around us, no escape. It's either solid, liquid, gas. Name it in our room. You can see inside your room, you have your laptops, you have your cooking utensils. There's, these are solids. And you have the water, these are liquids. You have the soap, liquid soap, liquid. Solvents, liquid, like I said, everything powder like that, uh, name it, okay? So, there's no escape. All of us are surrounded with matter. Okay, three phases of matter. Solid, liquid, and a gas. And that's very clear. Okay? Like before that, no coffee sa ako guys. Okay, okay activate ako kong brain cells. Charot! Charot lang. Okay? Sorry mga kalangga. Okay, mga talaga, mag, ano ko, mag, boiling process, 100 degrees Celsius, boiling point, and atmospheric pressure of a liquid is equal to the vapor, the pressure of the vapor, and that is boiling point, 100 degrees Celsius. Okay? So, ganon. Basically, guys, how do you call it in your guy? I'm going to go in there. Okay. If you are not good in mathematics, at least you are good in science. If you are not also good in science and mathematics, at least you are good in English. Okay, because you know these three subjects are very, very important. For me, huh? It's only science, math, and English. If you are good in these three subjects, then be in law. Okay. So, you can be uh, a successful professional in the future. Okay? So, if you want to serve the government, and at least you are a good communicator, and your public speaking is very impressive, or your public speeches for different types of audiences, okay, then you are very, very good and very conversant. You are very, you know, are good in oral communication. So, so you must be at least good in English, right? At least. Okay? So if not, you're also good in math and science. Diba? Ganon. Or you should be average with the three subjects. It's okay also. Okay? Average lunch. <laughs> okay, going back to my Okay? I'm doing the physical change. What do you mean physical change? <laughs> a change it undergoes according to its physical property. And boiling point is a physical property 
and then heating also to change into vapor is also a part of physical property. Yeah. It's not yet a chemical change, guys. Ha? Why? Because it's still water, man. Okay? And we need to identify also, because sometimes it's very difficult also to analyze for that. For example, so what is a suspension? What is a colloid? Why? There is a coagulation process. If you remember that in your chemistry, there is a coagulation. Oh my gosh, it's a coagulation. There is a residue. Why like this? What is this all about? What kind of lecture is this? And you have to scrutinize. Okay, the difference. When can you say that this is a colloid, a suspension, like that? Where can you say it is a homogeneous mixture, heterogeneous mixture? Or where can you say it is a solution, a chaos solution, something like that? Or when, when can you say that it is a, a metalloid, a semiconductor, something like that? Or non-metal, metal, something like that? <laughs> or when, when can you say that it is an alloy? Okay? A-L-L-O-Y. So you have to, to be clever enough the different processes involved so that you can really understand what will be the products will be produced after different chemical reactions or any physical changes or chemical changes it undergoes. Oh my gosh, it's already done. It was very quick. Oh my gosh, I hate the rats. Wait, there's a... My office is not going to be so, I'm saying it's a question, right? Woo! I'm not a local. Let's investigate. Wow. Is coffee a heterogeneous mixture or a homogeneous mixture? Ganon. Apply it lang dito. From the kitchen, ganon sa kachucha. Wow. Okay. Ganon. Okay guys, mga palangga, mahay ko ba kayo? Chots, makaloka. Okay guys, if you really also understand the chemistry and the matter itself, then it's also very very uh, good to understand about the, you know, the OSH pertaining to handling of hazardous substances. Okay? You wish you have an idea of what's that all about, like this. It's very enjoyable. For me, it's very enjoyable. Okay? Oh, coffee! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Ang pait ng coffee ni Lin Lin. Oh my gosh. Bitterness. Oh my gosh, ang tapang ng coffee ni Lin Lin. Huwag na. Baka may magalit. Hello, mga palangga! Wow! Naku eh, in fairness! Nakakalo. Sorry for the interruption with the lab. I need to drink coffee talaga. Very cold! Okay, I think the temperature is uh, below 15 or whatever. Something like that. I always all the time. Oh my gosh! And I don't wear the jacket also. Okay. Oh my gosh! Wow! Okay, guys! And then, guys, uh, we need also to understand the characteristic and the property, or shall we say, what's really a solid, what's really a liquid, what's really a gas, which among the three have a higher evaporation rate? Which of the following have a higher diffusion rate? Which of the following have the higher molecular weight or molar mass? Which of the following has higher density? Something like that. Which of the following that has higher viscosity? Something like that. So you should also uh, uh, scrutinize the behavior of this three phases of matter so that we can easily interpret during calculations in the problem solving pertaining to this solid liquid and gas, especially the topic of stoichiometry and chemical calculations, right? Or let's say physical chemistry, thermodynamics, okay? Or general chemistry lectures, right? In the topic of gases, right? Or liquids, or the solids also, in the expression of concentrations, like that, okay? 
ganun siya. And then you can also say, oh, which among the following is highly compressible over the other? Its gas is high, a com higher compression ratio compared to the liquid. Which among the three will be easily expand? Okay, at a higher temperature, at a lower temperature. Though it compresses easily over the other, like that, the law of expansion and compression, again, thermodynamics. Okay, something like that. So, we need to know the characteristic of solid, liquid, and gas. Okay. And then we need to connect with each other. Okay? Which among the three will retain the shape of a container? Oh, ganan. Which among the three is a very solid and compact with each other? The molecules are more compact over the other. Which of the following is a higher kinetic energy? Of the three, it is a matter. Oh, you will also remember that kinetic molecular theory of ideal gas laws. Something like that, guys, right? Okay, and then, oh, that's it. <laughs> Which of the following has a uh, physical properties? The, the luster, the brittleness, brittleness, <laughs> the malleability, ganon, so metal siya, di ba? So then, okay, you get the point that talks about the metallurgy. Topic, metallurgical topic, undermining, mining operations like blah 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 so and so. The mineral deposits in the underground earth surface, right? Mining operations like that, blah blah blah. Or geology, okay, like that. So solid shot, and then there's also water, okay, liquid shot. Then on, okay. Pero sa una, guys, I love really to study gas. Okay, there's a lot of formula of gas that I enjoy a lot. Okay, not so much with solid because solid is all about expression, concentration, and together with the liquids also. Molality, normality, molality, ganganan. But gas is talaga kay, ganang kasi mga formulas, ganganan. Right? And sometimes, makabuang. Pero it's okay. <laughs> okay, guys. Naman na siya matter, no? So, let's erase this. And we need to draw a flow chart. Okay? Okay. Flow chart. Okay, guys. Very clear, no? Okay. So, we start with the matter. Matter, matter. Okay, matter. Love is all that matter. Right. So this is the matter. Guys, the matter composed of molecules. Okay, molecules composed based on my stack knowledge. Molecules composed of atoms and atoms composed of elementary particles. That's it. Okay? So it's gonna be the, the sequence. Okay? Like that. So we need to say a molecule is larger than an atom. An atom is larger than a particle. Something like that. Okay? You get the point. It's also self-explanatory because we have the Avogadro number. 6.023 times 10 to the 23 per molecule, which is higher than the mass of the protons and the electrons. Remember that the mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilogram. And that's only negative because electrons will be in the outermost of the shell in the nucleus. Right? If you will draw the Dalton atomic theory, if atomic structure, the electrons is in the outermost. And then in the center of the nucleus, there are neutrons and protons banded together in the inner part because they are all positive. That's why the mass of the protons and neutrons are very, very close to each other. You get the point? It's gonna be 1.67 times 10 to the uh, negative 27, blah, 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 right? Negative 27 kilogram, something like that. <laughs> Really? Yes. Let's analyze because if you have to put exponent too much, then it will become too huge. It's very really weightful. So it's always negative in their charges. 
or exponent. Okay? Because when I was in high school, I memorized that completely. And I remember now, I flash back into my memory. So, I will put negative exponent. Because those are light. Okay? If I will put positive to the 7, the positive, it's very weak. The mass is very big. Right? So, it's negative by common sense. Something like that. You get the point. So that's why I say 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilogram is the mass of the proton nearly equal to the mass of the neutron. Something like that because they are all passing together and it's also obviously understandable because they are closer with each other inside the nucleus. That's the main principle there. That's why their mass are very closer. But these electrons are in the outside. So 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilogram. Because it is lighter compared to the protons and the neutrons. You get a point? Something like that. Okay? And discovered by G.G. Thompson. Okay? <laughs> Based on my memory. Okay, and then the neutrons is uh, Chadwick, something like that. Nakaloka. Neutrons. Okay? So, the ilang ko, guys. Okay, more man ako nilundoman, guys. Okay? Muna siya. Okay, matter. In matter, guys, we need to understand how that it should be subdivided into. Okay? The first we need to understand, guys, is the properties of matter. Okay, properties of matter talaga siya. First, ha? Properties. Okay? Properties of matter. It's in there. I have a very beautiful memory in here because the last question when I became the champion of the chemistry quiz bowl is related to the properties of matter when I was in high school. Oh my gosh, the last question was all about intrinsic property and I answered it correctly. Okay? Something like that. So properties matter. Because I love really joining such kind of contests when I was young. Science quiz, bowl, science fish, like that. Okay? So properties of matter. And then changes of matter. And then we have also the classification of matter. And you need to understand this, huh? Between the three. Okay? Classification of matter. This is really basic. Ita kasabot ni ba? kita. If you will go to the higher subjects in the future, second year level, third year level, fourth year level, fifth year level. Because they're studying entropy, enthalpy, and entropy and enthalpy is. What's that? That is like a intensive property. Something like that, okay? So, ganun siya. Okay? You get the point. So, that's it. Entropy, enthalpy, Helmholtz energy, different kinds of energy. Sorry, extensive property or extrinsic property. Sorry. Okay? This, uh, that is quantifiable because there's a unit of measure. There's uh, a quantity and a magnitude and quantity and direction. Vector quantity in physics, right? For example, if the gas will flow there, forward, backward, direction, sideward, direction, left, like that's, that's a direction. There's a magnitude, you need the unit. For example, uh, 25 BTU per hour, like that. Okay, heat energy or the enthalpy content, something like that, or the heat content itself. So there's vector quantity, magnitude, and direction, just like the acceleration, velocity, like that, in fix. Okay? So, related to each other, no? So, okay. So, we have ganon. Changes, okay, of matter. Okay? And the classification of matter. Classification of matter. But I enjoy the most in the changes of matter. Really. Uh, okay. Because it involves motion, movement, then the norm, right? So, properties of math. I don't have to discuss in detail because of the extensive property, the intrinsic property. Actually, guys, you know, the subject called material science, you know, also that kind of subject, but it's not 
very common in our profession, but I think this is one of the subjects of civil engineering, just like the strength of the materials and the engineering mechanics. Though all engineering courses have engineering mechanics, but the center of that is are under civil engineering for the strength of the materials, and engineering mechanics, and material science. Okay, like this. Wait, materials, you need to say again, matter. Let me take coffee, guys. Wow. Okay. So, guys, uh, when we say extensive property, that would mean also extrinsic property. But it depends on the specific uh, kinds of subject you are dealing with. If you say chemistry, really, general chemistry, you will go back to extrinsic, the appropriate term, though it has the same uh, connotation. You know, connotation meaning it has the same concept and ideology, something like that. Okay? So, when we mean of intrinsic property, that is also intrinsic property. Okay? In chemistry, we normally say intrinsic rather than intensive, something like that. But some books, reference books, will say extensive because it's just normally the same technically, but I am talking for the appropriateness. Okay? But for the material science, okay, material science, we always say extensive and intensive. Something like this. You get the point. But it's just, for example, if I will say uh, uh, mass is an example of what kind of property? Mass. Okay, so what is that? So your answer will be an either extensive property or extrinsic property because the value is not dependent to the size of the system or the amount of the sample of the amount of matter present. That's just the mass, the length, the size, the dimensions, something like that, the amount of the substance or the mole, M-O-L-E. Okay, that's also under the extensive property. So when you say extensive, you will answer that one. It's also correct. And extensive also correct. Okay, it depends on talaga siya what's been there. For example, that is a multiple choice. Okay, that's why they, when they put that in a multiple choice question, they will never put the two. Okay, it could either be extensive is there, it's also extensive is there, extensive property is there. Something like that. Because it normally have the same meaning. Something like that. Okay? You got the point. Something like that. So, extensive and extrinsic properties. Intrinsic and intensive property. In your memorization, you have to take not only one clue. Okay? So, in high school, I memorized that already. That if you say intrinsic, take the word I am. You have to say, I am so independent, like that. So use the word independent in your definition. Okay? So the other one will be dependent, right? So if I say, intensive property, intrinsic property, so you will normally say that it is a physical quantity whose value is independent. Okay? Because the word in, your uh, hint or clue, independent or inversely proportional to the size of the system, amount of a sample, or amount of a substance, or amount of the matter present. <laughs> Could either be liquid, solid, and a gas. Something like that. Okay? So let me keep memorize. Okay? You have to take not only one term, independent. So equivalent to intrinsic, okay, intensive. And the, super, and the other one, look, automatically the extensive. And another tool for the extensive also, normally it's basing on the external. Okay, external, something like that. External. Okay? And it will retain the shape of a container, meaning the amount. Okay? Something like uh, mass, volume, and the on. Length, dimension. So extensive na siya. Okay? The on. Okay, so properties of matter is physical, pro no, extensive property. 
and intrinsic property, and we have the physical property and the chemical property. Okay, I have to put here. Chaba. Ano ay madugay kita ani guys, no? Gunong las ako eh. Okay, guys, thank you so much. I'll cut this video. So matter, we'll study the properties of matter, changes of matter, and classification of matter. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, no comment, like, and share. You can also subscribe by writing the channel if you have your full freedom to like, to subscribe or not. And then you can click the notification bell for some news updates on I am a senior voice. Bye bye, guys, everybody. See you later. I have to cut because it's already lengthy. Oh my gosh.